All right. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Shane from Liberty Under Attack Radio here. It's uh, Thursday evening around uh, 8.40 p.m. Central Standard Time. As most of you know, uh, tomorrow I'll be uh, loading up the car and heading out to the fourth annual Midwest Peace and Liberty Fest in Delton, Michigan. Uh, and our unpaid volunteer uh, on the ground reporter, Lou Fien, is uh, already there. Uh, he's joining. Uh, he's joining me to tell us uh, about the setup, uh, what to expect, uh, as well as why you should make it out to uh, the festival this year. So, Lou, uh, uh, welcome back. Uh, how are you doing this evening? I'm doing great, and uh, it, it's a real pleasure to do a Fiend in the Field report <laughs> for uh, Liberty Under Attack. Yeah. So I, I have the assault kitchen locked and loaded. I will be open carrying the assault kitchen all weekend. Uh, I suggest that everybody else open carry their assault kitchens too, <laughs> especially if you got the shoulder thing that goes up. <laughs> Very good. So, so you have open carry. What's an open assault kitchen? Is that loaded up with uh, with all of the uh, all of the weapons not uh, pro not or all the weapons prohibited by the state? Uh, it's it's a full magazine of bacon. Because we'll make any oh proper assault, any proper assault kitchen has a cyclic rate of thirty pounds of bacon per minute. Okay, very good, very don't, good. Don't register your assault kitchens. Make the Senate Dem or the House Dems have a, another sit-in protest where, where that one guy is all pouting. <laughs> they won't register their kitchens and their spatulas <laughs> and stuff. Oh yeah. <laughs> so, why why should people come up out here? Because you, you did mention. That I'm going to tell people why they should. Mm -hmm. um, what, what Liberty Fest, just like uh, Agora Fest, which is towards the end of uh, September, and that will be out in Wisconsin near the Minnesota border, and Pork Fest, and Jack Lowe Freedom Festival, and just all these different little festivals have in common. I, I mentioned this on last night's show when I wasn't getting droned by the Internet. Uh, we spent a lot of time theorizing of what Lib Pair would look like. Lib Pair being Libertarian Paradise or Ancapistan, whatever you want to call it, Voluntary Bill, whatever. Uh, this is an opportunity for people to actually get together with other like-minded people and put it into practice. So instead, of, so instead of just theorizing what it would look like to be free and not have the central scrutinizer standing over you or not have the pork rangers to the rescue, <laughs> to, to not have – not. To not have all these progressive authoritarians standing over you saying, "No, don't do that. No, you, that, you, that 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 drag on that vape was was out of compliance. No, you can't do that." Now, it, it's it's an opportunity to come out here, govern yourself, get along with other people, have great conversations, trade ideas. Uh, the 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 community environment that you have out here. Um, you came out here for the last for the first time last year. You're a returning guest. I'm an organizer, so of course I'm supposed to say, yes, you should come out here. But you are choosing to come back out, and I'm assuming it's because you really enjoyed the people, there was good food, and you just overall had a really good time, right? Yeah, yeah, it was, uh, uh, I mean, I became an anarchist probably uh, April or, or May of uh, last year, and uh, I was I already felt isolated here in the communist state of Illinois. And uh, when I went out to the festival, it was uh, yeah, it was an amazing experience. Uh, uh, great people, great presentations, uh, great discussions. Uh, so yeah, that's that's why I'm coming back out there. Uh, okay, it's, it's, so, it's a great time. So you got your education, became an anarchist, came out here, did your internship, and now you've gone <laughs> back and. <laughs> So, I, yeah, it, it, it is a really good environment. I live in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan, uh, an area called Bear Saskatchewan, or at least that's what I call it. And Bear Saskatchewan is pretty much a little circle that goes everywhere around where I am up there. So Bear Saskatchewan could actually be in the big city, but I usually leave Bear Saskatchewan outside <laughs> the big city, and then I pick it back up when I leave. But I, I'm, I'm really isolated because the – well, one, there's not that many people up there to begin with, and two, that it seems like there's an awful lot of flag waivers and status and bootlickers and everything else. And, and, and as a matter of fact, to give you an example, when I went to Pork Fest, I drove through Kanukistan. So I, I drove my truck, went through the barbed wire, answered all the questions at Checkpoint <laughs> Charlie. And, uh, yeah, it's just we Charlie. But anyway, uh, I, I, I went through there, and along the Transcontinental Highway, uh, I would say that I probably spent at least five, maybe six, probably 600 miles on the Trans-Canada Highway. And I went from Ontario all the way through uh, Quebec, went through Montreal and everything else. And a lot of it's a very rural drive. So that's where you would expect to see a bunch of flag waivers. And with the Canadian flag, and it's red and white, it's got a big giant maple leaf on it, so it's hard to miss it. 
I saw fewer Canadian flags along the Trans Trans Canada Highway than I find going from one end of a campground to the other. <laughs> yeah. And they're in the occupied states of America. And you can't go through the RV park without seeing a you know five or six flags out of out of ten campers. You know they got the, they got their little flag post right on the front of their fifth wheel. So first thing that they do, I mean, they don't even level out their they don't even level out the the camper. They'll, they'll go and they'll disconnect it. Maybe, maybe they'll put it on jacks, but they haven't leveled it out yet. Unless they got the self leveling thing. But the first thing that they do is they just go and they they plant that flag right in the right in the flag holder. And they're like, yes, now I can begin my fun and, and outdoors adventure because. I have engaged in flagetry. I have shown my love for <laughs> my nation. <laughs> yeah. What in the hell were we talking about? Before I went on there? <laughs> <clears throat> well, well, it was, I was I was talking about, uh, or I mentioned that. Uh, uh, yeah, there's there's not many like-minded people here in uh, here in Illinois. It's mostly uh, I, I mostly associate with. Uh, well, no, I don't associate with them, but uh, I am in higher level indoctrination. So, uh, with uh, with a lot of the millennials, uh, yeah, they're uh, they're they're, uh, they're Bernie folks. Uh, which uh, which isn't any better than Trump, but it's just uh, that's that's what uh, what I'm accustomed to. But uh, so so you you got there uh, at the uh, uh, Circle Pond Center what uh, an hour ago or so. Uh, I got here about seven fifteen Eastern time, so I I oh, was couple actually hours. I actually got here around the time that I said that I would. So everybody else is shocked because I'm I'm normally a couple hours late for everything, but I actually <laughs> got here when I said I would. And I got here at a reasonable time, too, because I actually got on the road early because, um, as I showed you earlier, I'm in my camper right now. And this thing is pretty neat because once you have it packed up, you don't have to do a whole heck of a lot. I did it the day before, plug it in, get the refrigerator and the freezer cold, and then you can put your put your food in there and hit the door. Nice. So, I, yeah, it was, it, was a, it was a pretty smooth trip. A very long drive for me, though. It's probably a eight-and-a-half-hour drive. Uh, not counting the the time zone from civilized time zone to extremist time zone. <laughs> uh, so, so no matter what time I leave, I lose an hour, and you'll face that tomorrow. Yes, I will, and I didn't I didn't realize that initially. Cause yeah, I get out of, I get out of a high level indoctrination at uh, like two fifteen, and I was like, oh shit, I'll be there at six thirty. Then I was like, oh wait, no, I won't, cause I'll lose an hour. Uh, so yeah, you're 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 definitely uh, you're definitely right about that. So uh, uh, how's setup going? Uh, how many people are there already for the uh, uh, for for the setup? Well, there's just a handful that have that have shown up, and essentially, what we've done is we have the. Now I'm going to take you on a little trip here. Ooh, we exclusive the, tour. Hey, it's a feed on the field report. We're, we're <laughs> playing around here. So let me turn the camera around here. Okay, flip over. Okay, can you see? You should probably see some uh, my tiki torches here. Uh huh. Yep. Yes, sir. So anyway, yeah, and there's a handful of people that are out here. This is Mike. He's got his little pop-up camper going. You can't really see too well. But uh, the Ritters are here. They're set up, and they got uh, – we have the, the big tent, the spontaneous order tent that's set up, as well as uh, the check-in booth where you, you can show people your papers mm -hmm. <laughs> and get yourselves registered. So register your friends and family. And, oh, wow. Here, part – Party hamster, party walk. That's this is Sophie. Oh, you can't see her too well, but anyway, uh, she's a rat dog. So anyway, <laughs> over here at the uh, fire, as you can see, we got the fire, and here's some of the people that are here. We have Joe, Rick, really uh, Paul. <laughs> I guess you can't see them too well either. Uh, Danny. Danny. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, smile so that we can see you, Danny. <laughs> Okay, it's, it's not working out too well. Anyway, oh, I just want to say so. that Liberty's not under attack here. <laughs> I, I hope Did not. <laughs> yeah, I caught that, yeah. Okay. So, uh, let's, talk, let's talk to some other returning guests here. Melissa, you want to comment? Where are you, Melissa? Is she here? No. No? no. Okay. Mary. I'm here. My, my hippie Mary. Hi. This is your fourth Liberty Fest. It is. Yeah. I've been here for every single one of them. Yes. Uh, can you even see her? Yeah. Oh yeah, I can. Yeah, I, I, okay. yeah, I can see her. Yeah. Okay. All right. Just right, so gonna interrogate here. Where were you on, on the night of? So anyway, Mary. Yes. Why do you keep coming back? What, what's so special about Liberty Fest to you and MPLC? 
Answer the question. <laughs> now. <laughs> you don't get a lawyer. I've been here since the beginning, strip and I search. figure I might right. as well We're stick it out search, right. until liberty is, is had by everyone around the world. Liberty by all. Um, that and we're really, really close. That helps. <laughs> <laughs> all right. What is it that you really enjoy about the Liberty Festival? Seriously. Connection. Okay. Connection with, with friends and connection with fellow Liberty lovers. It's like automatically you show up and you're automatically got something in common with everybody here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And never met them before, right? Chances are you got something in common with them. Oh, yeah. Just by the fact that you're here. Okay. Lynn, how about you? I like Mary's answer. It's the, <laughs> the yeah, it's um, being connected with people that are like minded. Uh, they want liberty, not just for themselves, but for everyone. And um, it's a great time. You have family, you have friends, and some of your friends feel like family. Yeah, Indeed. that's the best part. Yeah. And, and you have your son here. He's 13, correct? Yes. Okay, and he has. He, he's not wearing the T-shirt that, that I that I really dig. It says <laughs> that he runs with scissors. Yes. But, <laughs> so for for people that are watching right now, they're maybe on the fence and and they're undecided on whether they're going to come. They want to come, but they're not really sure. Uh, what would you tell them if they have like 13 year old kids? Well, there's a lake. People go bike riding. We're going to have hay rides. Uh, there's marshmallows and fudgy pies. <laughs> You'll have to come to see what those are. And uh, just, you know, like I said before, there's families. And so uh, there's other kids, uh, hopefully the same age as yours. So as, so as Lynn and Nancy Pelosi says, you have to come to see what's in it. <laughs> <laughs> Bruce, you are, you are one of the main organizers now, and, and this is your second fest, is that correct? That's right. Okay. Yeah. So... Were you an organizer on the first one? How did you get involved with MPLC? Uh, I met someone who had actually had a Bitcoin meetup who gave me an MPLC handout. And then I joined, you know, came to one of the excitement there, came to one of the meetups and uh, then came to the fest last year. And I'm back this year. Okay. And involved with organizing. Okay. So apparently you enjoyed it that much that you wanted to take a bigger part? Definitely. Yeah. Um, one of the things that's really cool is we have um, uh, people giving talks, you know, all, oh, like, you know, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, you know, hours and hours of talks. Uh, you're giving a couple presentations. Maybe. Yep. Uh, and uh, just people sharing information. They have a lot of interesting stuff to learn. Uh, so that's a cool, that's a cool thing. Okay, how about you? Uh, are, are you giving any presentations? Joe, could you get the light on him? Shine it right in his face like he did something. <laughs> uh, I'm involved in one uh, Sunday morning, which is uh, uh, spirituality and anarchism. Uh, because some people think that to be uh, uh, an anarchist means that you have to be an atheist, for example, uh, and that it excludes different forms of spirituality or, or religious belief, and I don't think so. I, and so that's an interesting uh, panel discussion that we'll have. Uh, okay. Last year I gave, I was involved in a panel discussion on Bitcoin. Nice. And we accept Bitcoin here. Oh, at the fest. So what you're showing is this group has a big tent philosophy and not just literally with that big hunky monster over there to my right. That's correct. So, yeah. All right, cool. Yeah, we want to have discussion, interaction. Uh, that's great way to learn all right well thank you very much bruce thank you. and then moving over here we got we got danny I'm already on the show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah he'll be he'll be on there sunday mm -hmm. yeah, so, so, so apparently you guys Still already know this guy yeah. so anyhow all right so you're probably sick of him already <laughs> months and i'm already sick of him. all right here's mike here's my here's my neighbor in the... hey, hey, hey. <laughs> get the get the just just look that way Don't yeah. look at the light yeah. Don't look at the light. Look at the camera. Look at, look at the camera. <laughs> no, 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 no. Don't put it in the So mind. anyway, so Mike, this is your, what, second, third, third year? Third. Third. Okay, so you came out here for the uh, for the very first one at Circle Pines. You didn't catch the first one at Brighton. And how did you meet up with MPLC? Weren't you chasing Ellen Markey around? Yeah. <laughs> Thing at U of M and uh, you know, all these guys and girls. Yeah. 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 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Most, <laughs> mostly guys. <laughs> Matter of fact, the ones that you thought were girls were guys. But anyhow, well, Danny was I know there, that, though. and and that had nothing to do with Tijuana either. But anyway, yeah. so <laughs> so anyway, welcome to the MPLC family. You posted a lot of events out at your place, uh, New Year's Eve in particular, with the heated swimming pool outside. Yeah, 103 degrees and. First of January. <laughs> so anyway, the utilities love me. Thank you for your pool service. <laughs> and here we have Paul. We just spoke to his wife a little while ago. You may know his question. Paul's a man of few words. Am I being detained? <laughs> well, so actually, you actually, you anything today? <laughs> actually, you you registered for the entire weekend, so theoretically you are, but it's voluntary. So anyway. Uh, do you have any comments for the your, for the uh, listeners? Party. Everybody said some good stuff, so we're good to go. Okay. <laughs> Joe, somebody shine the light in Joe's face. I want to shine it in his face. Uh, All right, yeah. Spotlight. Yeah, th- <laughs> thank thank you for sitting down. I don't have a I don't have a super zoom on this camera. Okay. Hey, nobody loves <laughs> So Joe, sunglasses, so Joe, tell us what's going, what's new in the Klingon Empire? <laughs> <laughs> new in the Klingon Empire, the Midwest Peace and Liberty Fest. Apparently, it's in the Klingon Empire. Okay, and what are you drinking there? Is that Romulan ale? I am drinking some Black Box um, Cabernet Sauvignon. Hmm. What, what year is that? It's, it, it's a nice. March. <laughs> <laughs> it's 2014. <laughs> Wow. Oh, man. Oh, Must have been on sale. <laughs> but I tell you what, somewhere out there is a lucky lady who knows that she's going to have a nice romantic evening with you in a box of wine. Exactly. <laughs> so, so, all right. So, this is my fourth uh, Midwest Peace and Liberty Fest. I've been to them all. I've helped plan three of them. And, Artist working uh, man in the Midwest Peace and Liberty Fest team. And, oh, Lex yeah. Bruce. And uh, it's, it's going to be a great time. We've got a whole program full of events um for you today okay moving these, on these are some of the these are some of the talks we've got scheduled we've got a map in here 309 acre facility we're, we're over here right now around the fire um we've got an orchard over here we've got some extra camping possibilities over here this is where the talks are going to be in the pavilion we've got some cabins for rent down here and this little arrow points to about a half mile walk or drive to the beach we're going to have hay, hay rides this year to the beach. I, I think mm. it's a half mile walk, one mile drive. Okay. That could Because yeah, there's yeah. a lot of twisting around. There, anyway. there could be <laughs> We're going to have some microtonal hill. music this year. And um, I want to call your attention to the Dangerous History Podcast. will be here. Um, CJ will be giving a talk. Yeah. Prop CJ will be here Saturday. His presentation and, Saturday night, 6 p.m. And for life, I can't remember what it was. But his, anyway. his speech at noon, doing an insane. anarchy roundtable with him at oh. uh, Why was um, I thinking, 7 p.m. I was I thinking 6 p.m.? 6 p.m. Oh. is a state permaculture, a counter-economic strategy that is incompatible with state reformation by okay. Jamin We McCullough. will have on the anarchy roundtable, we'll have the world's famous anarchy roundtable. We're going to have Randy England, Shane Buell, and, and CJ. And Prof. There. CJ, we're yeah. pretty excited. Nice. <laughs> Hopefully some other people, too. So look forward to those <laughs> coming out uh, in the following weeks. Okay, Joe, here's a tough question. All right. What keeps you coming back after all these years? What keeps me coming back, what, what, when you first come around anarchy people, it's like this huge rush, this, this awesome feeling of connection, and you're finally around people who understand you. And, and then not the only person in the world that thinks like yeah, we're not the only person in the world like this. And then you get used. Unless to Unless you live in Illinois, like Shane does, and then you're just. <laughs> um, and then you get used to it, and then this is what normal is like for us. And to be around other people is not as fun. <laughs> it's just that. I mean, so, I'm just, so, that's the nicest way I can say it. it it's kind of, actually it's kind of boring to go to a party and. Oh, it is. It is. And you can't, you can't connect with them because there's, there's so many layers of, um, of, of thought that goes into your thoughts. It's like trying to explain calculus to someone who's just learning about two plus two. Pretty much. <laughs> and, and 
like to go to a party of, of states. Okay, so so does that sound about right, Shane? Because you're an administrator of segregation over in your prison of Illinois. <laughs> yeah, that's that's pretty accurate. That's why I don't uh, I don't associate with many folks here. Uh, <laughs> yeah, to put it simply, yeah. Thank, thank God for the air in that. Are yeah, you, no shit. How are you arriving, Shane? Yeah, when are you gonna be here, Shane? Uh, I'll be there around like tomorrow, eight tomorrow. Eastern time tomorrow. Okay, about eight eight Eastern time. Tomorrow. <laughs> okay, so we have a couple other people here, and I'm gonna take you over. If somebody would shine the flashlight on them. Don't look at Hi the there. Look at the camera. Here we have Rick and Melissa, and they're from Ohio. This is their second time coming to the Midwest Peace and Liberty Fest. They they were out here last year. And Melissa, are you going to be vending your salsa again? I am, yes. And the apple butter? No, no apple butter this year. Oh, for butter. God's sakes. I, <laughs> I like the apple butter. Yeah. So. No jam either. No jam? No. But we no. brought extra mango. Extra yes. mango. Okay, so you haven't been totally slacking. No. Right, no. And no, corn like relish. That, what, what was that? And corn relish. Okay. Yeah. All right. So what keeps you coming back? And I think I met you guys briefly at Pork Fest yeah. two, three years ago, something yeah. like that. Mm -hmm. So what keeps you coming back here? And are you are you swearing off Pork Fest now that it's become <laughs> coke infested? It's not worth the drive. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, it's not. It's it's a long drive. Trust me, I did it by myself. Yeah. You got to go through New York. That's the worst part. Well, I went through Kanuckasbury. <laughs> and... and and they weren't even that polite, at least not at the border. It's like, my God, going through Checkpoint Charlie or something like that. Right. Yeah. So as they're, as they're asking the questions, I'm like, uh, would you like me to answer in German or what? <laughs> but anyway. So what keeps you guys coming back here? The conversation. I like the small crowd. Yeah. It's not so, it's not clicky, you know. You get to know everybody, you recognize everybody. Okay. Yeah, that, that's that's one of the things that people have said that they like the most about it. Yeah, you can build relationships in a short period of time because of that. Yeah, I I I personally think that if you if you put forth a little bit of effort, not too much, just a little bit of effort, you could probably go through the entire camp and talk to everybody for at least a few minutes. Right. Right. Yeah. I, I, I think that I do. Them. I I, yes, yeah. I I spend time. I, I do this thing where I, I roam. think Joe does talk to everybody. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And you can well. yeah, you can tell when he's doing it because you smell the pepper spray. <laughs> so, but anyway, welcome back. It's, it's great to have you. Are you going to be taking part in any more MPLC events during the course of the year? Do you think you're going to try? Um, we've talked about it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And you have young kids here. How old yeah. are they? Nine, four, and two. Okay. Well, mm. It's always the man that remembers the ages of children. <laughs> remember, men, men always remember the important dates, like anniversaries, birthdays, stuff like that. And, you know, it's – so good good on you for that. Yeah. But anyway, all right, so, so, you have, so you have young children here. What yeah. would you tell folks with children of similar ages, or maybe even younger, you know, maybe two or three years old? What would you tell them about an event like this? So it's – it's really nice. The kids can kind of run around. I don't have to worry about them getting hit by cars. There's nothing else around here. We're like out in the woods, but we got this nice fields and stuff, so we can keep an eye on everything. There's not you have to worry about them running away, right? There's nowhere to go. All the people here are nice, and like I was saying, you get to recognize everybody, get to know everybody. You feel comfortable. They meet other little kids, and they all get to run around their little, you know, bottle bottle throwing groups or whatever it is, you know, little <laughs> running around and. Uh, so that, that, that's nice. It makes it easy to have fun and be able to have conversations yeah. with adults. <laughs> yeah, I, th I, there's a lot of activities here that that I've seen, and one of the uh, one of the presentations that I'll be doing is specifically for kids. It's a free rangers improvised fire starting yeah. lesson. So I think I think that's going to be pretty good. Yeah, our nine year old super excited about it. Okay. Yeah. 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 Fire. Yeah. 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 Fire. There's a good like family atmosphere you know there's lots of there's other kids to play with and everybody seems to be friendly and and uh, i think that makes it makes it easier as far as parenting goes do you guys generally go with a free range type of uh, <laughs> philosophy feral. Yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah feral, we prefer feral. <laughs> okay. free range that implies some sort of you know farm or something oh yeah <laughs> children are feral <laughs> <laughs> yeah 
So not too much NyQuil and duct tape to keep them in line right. is what nah, you're saying. Be all right. Right. Okay. <laughs> all right. Well, any any closing words? Come buy some uh, mango salsa. <laughs> so is is it regulated? Oh, absolutely. It's actually Mel Stateless Salsa is the brand, and it's bit cotted. Nice. Ooh. It's officially been Friday this year. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> and everything is um, sourced off. That kind of like homogenized? Yeah. Biff cotted like homogenized? How does that work? It's a Biff cot license. Yeah. 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 Can you explain Bip-Cot. that? It's a Biff cot no government license. Oh, I know what it is. I just... oh. <laughs> yeah. So the no, Biff cot no government license is um, it's, a, it's basically instead of having a uh, commons license to be able to share, anybody can use. Our, pro- our product's name or whatever, they can take our product and put it in their product and sell it. And we don't care what you do with it. As long as you give us money for the product and you can take it, it's yours. And, um, except basic- for the government. Yeah, yeah except, except for, for the, the government. government. So they, that's a, you know, if the government yeah, yeah, comes please. and uses it or charges anything, then we can uh, make fun of them. On the radio, oh, yeah. On the radio, <laughs> yeah. Now, I've come up with a new way of uh keeping the cops from bothering us once everybody gets here once almost everybody gets here i'm gonna put a thin blue line around the perimeter and ain't, <laughs> and ain't no cops gonna cross the thin blue line to come in here. so i've heard a similar uh, a similar joke where if oh, the cops are chasing you you throw a thin blue line on the road behind you and never I brought, yeah you heard that from me I but anyway <laughs> I could have brought blue mark. Paint, literally painted a thin blue Well, that, that, that's okay. The green stuff will keep the army out. All right. <laughs> Thank you very much, everybody. So, yeah, I didn't even realize that I left my phone with the hotspot going inside. So, has the connection been good? It's it's been like there were a couple part like you could still hear what people were saying. It was it was a little choppy for a few seconds, but yeah, it was fine. Okay. Yeah. That's got some range on it. So. Something else, if you have Verizon, you're going to be all set if you come out here. You don't have to worry about not being able to do a Skype call and do a radio show if you need to. You'll have that available. <laughs> so you, you've got the gist of, of what people can expect from the Midwest Peace and Liberty Fest. And I'm trying to turn this camera around. Let's see if it's working. There we go. Okay, there I am. So that that's what you can expect out of the Midwest Peace and Liberty Fest. It's adult friendly. It's kid friendly. It's it's a really good time, and the the sense of community that you get out of people that well, I, I don't live down in southeastern Michigan anymore, but I used to see these folks once a week, or at the very least two or three times a month, and now I only get to see them maybe three or four times a year. So something like this is, is such a great connection. But as somebody like you who's isolated in, in uh, the People's Republic of Illinois, and <laughs> I, I see where that would get depressing. You'd, and you would wonder, you know, how do I, how do I not throw a, a, a belt over the shower curtain rod? Just, <laughs> you know. This is what gives you hope. This is what lets you know that there's more to the world than just, you know, voting for a false sense of liberty so. yeah yeah that that's 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 definitely true and, and and yeah i mean uh like the i i went there la- i went to the fest last year and i knew like i i messaged you on facebook a couple of times i knew cal moline he was he was the one that told me about it uh so i knew like nobody literally nobody and i came here and met everybody and uh we I guess correspond on Facebook for the past year and I'm coming back again and now I'll know most of the people there, I think. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely, it's definitely something I recommend people give, give Yeah, definitely come. You, you definitely won't regret it. If, if I could share a couple stories with mm-hmm. you before we sign off here, um, two people that came out here, not knowing anybody, um, uh, one was uh, Ernie. I think you met Ernie, the, the, the constitutional anarchist from the Libertarian Party. Hmm. And incidentally, uh, I, I think I'm thinking about it. I need to get some poster board for this, but I think I'm going to set up an unfree speech zone somewhere out in the Poison Ivy patch. And that's where people can go and talk freely about how their candidate is going to give them liberty and make them a little bit freer and give them a longer leash. Anyway, I, I'm, I'm trying to figure out if I want to call it an unfree speech zone or a violent speech zone. But anyway, but Arnie, 
who's just a sweetheart of a guy. He was he was scrolling around on on Facebook, and this is before the first festival. And he saw a cop block door hanger. Now it says, "Come back with a warrant," you know, because you know was, if, if the cops are knocking on your door, you don't have to let them in unless they go to their coworker and get his written permission for them <laughs> to come in. But uh, <laughs> he's like, "Where do I get one of those?" And Katie Testa. It said, well, come out to the Midwest Peace and Liberty Fest. And this, this, the first one was held out in Brighton, Michigan, which is not too far from the Detroit area. It's, I don't know, maybe an hour out of the city of Detroit. So Arnie lives out here on the west side. He's like Kalama, somewhere outside Kalamazoo. But anyway, he packed up his old tent, went out, set it up, didn't know anybody. And the very first night, he's sitting around the campfire shooting the bull with all his brand new friends. And he came to a number of uh, meetups on the on the east side. After that, uh, an MPLC franchise has popped up on the on the west side of the state, kind of like Fight Club franchises. <laughs> and uh, so he's been going to a lot of those meetups. And then there's there's a gal that uh, came out here uh, two years ago. She wasn't able to make it last year, but I think she'll be back here this year. Uh, her husband had passed away, and she wasn't really doing a whole hell of a lot. And as you've already said, when you're an anarchist, you're already isolated. You know, I, unless you're ready to go vote for some great man to impose his will upon others, you're pretty well isolated. But anyway, so she was dealing with uh, having lost her husband, and she came out here, and I believe that was this was like the first real event that she'd gotten involved with since her husband had passed. And she's come to a few other events during that time. So it, it is very therapeutic, the, the sense of family, community, and the love that you will get out of complete strangers. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I, I, I certainly agree. I certainly agree. Um, lots, of, lots, of, lots of great people, lots of great people, and uh, uh, yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to getting there tomorrow. So uh, I guess uh, I've got one question, little, uh, a little bit of a, a comical one. But uh, uh, now, I'm sorry. What was that? <laughs> I don't do comedy. Oh damn! Well, you're gonna have to you're gonna you're gonna have to adapt. Uh, <laughs> so I know this is something that's probably rattling around in people's minds. Like most people watching this video are are probably thinking they're, they're probably thinking about this question. So, is the festival a safe space? And if so, does the Midwest Peace Liberty Coalition provide the coloring books, or are individuals left to their own devices? It's BYOCB, Bring Your Own Coloring Books. Well, Bring Your Own Coloring Books? Actually, the hippies, Jason and Mary, probably have some coloring books laying around. or I, They have different arts and crafts. Uh, is it a safe space? It's safe-ish in regards to you're not going to be judged for being weird, <laughs> unless, of course, you're like a, an ANCOM or something like that, in which case you'll, you'll probably get uh, asked a bunch of really annoying questions that you can't answer. Uh, <laughs> So, I mean, it's, it, as far as, like, the social justice warrior nonsense, no. Uh, but it is generally a environment of mutual respect. There will be some uh, some ball busting going on because, uh, I mean, you know, that's just how people are. Uh, yeah. they have a, if they have a familiarity with each other, they're going to they're gonna crack jokes about, you know, whatever it is. Mm-hmm. Or, I'm more anarchist than you are. And, no, you're not, you know, and whatever. <laughs> you can't be an anarchist. You voted twelve years ago for the LP <laughs> candidate, whoever it was. So, <laughs> I mean, it, it, stuff like that. But uh, it, it's it's an environment of mutual respect. There's no really mean, nasty, hateful stuff going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely, definitely. And that was more of a, a just a comical question to close this out. But uh, yeah, any any closing thoughts uh, for for the uh, for the viewers on YouTube and uh, Facebook? If you're if you're on the fence about coming out here, uh, get off the fence and land on the proper side and get out here. At the very least, get a taste of what it is that you've been theorizing about. And if you're if you're already on the fence towards the ooh eek that scares me, you now come out here and maybe you'll prove your prove your fears wrong. So if yeah. Uh, yeah, and it's not Mad Max. I know a lot of people say, oh, anarchy, that's Mad Max. You know, Well, statism, that's Schindler's List. But anyhow, 
uh, get out here and see what it's like. And I'm pretty sure that you'll have a good time and, and you'll want to, you'll want to get involved in other events and maybe start your own group and start your own events. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you'll probably come back. I, 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 from, from, I can say from personal experience, you'll probably come back. So, uh, thank you so much for uh, taking a little time to talk, Lou. Uh, I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> All right. Thanks for having me, Shane. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow night. Not a problem. Not a problem. We'll see you, Lou. Arms. <laughs> All right. So, uh, uh, what can you expect from Liberty under attack this weekend? Uh, well, on Saturday, I'll be giving a presentation on the freedom umbrella of direct action. Uh, this, that will happen at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I uh, don't think I'll be able to broadcast that live, but uh, there will be a video of it uh, here soon. Uh, not quite sure when they'll uh, then, when they'll get that out, but uh, I did get things settled with the hotspots, so maybe, just maybe, if I can get the audio stuff figured out, uh, I might be able to uh, broadcast that live uh, through FPRN Radio. Uh, but we'll just, we'll just have to see on that note. Uh, on Sunday, uh, we'll be live with some interviews you don't want to miss. Uh, that's at uh, uh, 7 p.m. Central Time, 8 p.m. Eastern. Uh, we'll be live uh, with uh, Mark Wood will be joining us and probably a couple other folks who don't have that all ironed out yet. Uh, but uh, I'll, I'm sure I'll uh, pre-record some interviews as well with some, some other folks throughout the weekend. So... Uh, yeah, as, as Lou was saying and as everyone else around the fire was saying, if you're twiddling your thumbs this weekend... Consider coming out to the Midwest Peace and Liberty Fest. It'll be going on until August 29th at the Circle Pine Center in Delton, Michigan, and uh, we'd certainly love to have you. And like I said before, uh, you'll probably be coming back. Uh, so if you have any questions, feel free to ask me, uh, or you can find the event page on Facebook. Uh, my personal profile is facebook.com forward slash shane.radliff. I'm pretty sure. If not, just search for Shane Radliff. It's a public profile. Uh, and yeah, I'd be happy to point you in the right direction or get you the information uh, that you're looking for. So uh, with that said, thanks so much. And I really hope you enjoyed this uh, this on-the-ground report from, uh, from Lou Fien. Uh, and uh, hopefully uh, we'll see out there uh, the spontaneous order tent the pavilion with all the presentations. Hopefully we'll have a, a good conversation uh, if you decide uh, to come. So that's all I've got. Uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully we'll see you there. Uh, laissez faire.